I came thousands of miles across the pond from America. I landed in Ghana, Tamale, the northern region. I stumbled up on wet gold. Wet gold is the future. We're here at the Chief Palace. Um, this is what you do. It's all about respect when you come to Africa and you must communicate with the chiefs, be a part of the tribe, and then you can move on in business. So that's what we're here today to do is to uh, meet the chief, um, let the chief know what we're trying to do and what, what we're trying to accomplish, and then we can pave the way and the chief will give us his blessing to pave the way to bring the shade nut to the world. Um, I want to let the know, chief know, thank you for having us. Assalamu alaikum. We come here from America as a team to uplift and um, we, we want to do great business here in uh, Ghana, particularly the northern region of Ghana. And um, we're just thankful that we're being embraced. This is our true home. And now it's the time of the home of the return. And so this is why we're here. And we're very thankful that he, he brought us in with nothing but love. Here to find something so precious, wet gold, ladies and gentlemen. They come from the Shayna. The impurities of the Shayna is uh, fantastic. So we're here to show you guys how it's done, how the process is done organically, no chemicals added, straight from the Shayna, ladies and gentlemen. So we're here today, we're gonna see the women, we're gonna see what they're gonna do, how they do it, hard work that goes into this. It's a lot of hard work. And so we're here to really get all the benefits of the Shayna so we can also help the situation. Just to give you a little history of the Shayna, um, the herbalist ancestors um, was looking for more herbs to uh, heal different things um, in, the, in the area. And so they came across this tree. When they cut this tree down, they saw this white in this tree. And then they felt that it had a oily base. So from that point, they started to take the nut and they tried to process it and continue and continue. And today, what we get is shea butter from these nuts. And so these have so many healing factors, um, good for skin rashes, uh, they would bathe the baby babies in them um, and all different type of uh, impurities that this can get out your body that it has been used for for centuries. What we have here, they have the shade net. This is the Shea Nuts torch. Um, these are harvests. The ladies have to risk some of their lives to go get these nuts. Each lady will get three bags, and each of these bags weigh 85 kg. Very, very heavy, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very hard process. And so this is why we must appreciate it. We must appreciate the hard labor and work that uh, these ladies put in. Um, but this is start of wet gold. Nuts gotten from this forest areas and this reserves where 
no application of chemicals at all. They are totally on their own from their dry leaves. Yeah. Green manure. Yeah. That's how they they, they survive. They yeah. Just, yeah. Huh. But and, and more into that for the conventional ones, they are they are untraceable nuts. You yeah. don't really yeah. tell where it's been collected, who oh, okay. actually processed it, where yeah. it was transported, where it has been stored. Yeah, just got here. Yes, just got here. <laughs> you just buy them from the markets and you bring them here. But for the organic, it's traceable. Mm -hmm. Right from who picked it, where it was processed, where it was stored, uh -huh. transported it, where it was processed, who processed it, who purchased it, who kept it, who moved it, who mm -hmm. saved it. So it's, it, it takes that process. So uh, is the organic, naturally everything organic is more expensive for that kind of track right yeah. Yeah. Yes, so it's very good. Yeah, on the ground as well. So you get the water, wash them. Watching the here. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the washing process over there as they were washing uh, the shea nuts. Um, now we're here, we're doing the latest shade nuts out and dry them. Another form of the process. Head with this piece. This young lady can shade nuts out. And we sit out here um, in this lovely African sun and uh, dry out. And then we're going to roast them. These are the raw shade nuts. And as you can see, you still feel the bulb. Uh, a moisture in the dry on the platform, then crash. So we have a machine inside here. And the reason why we actually break them is because of the machine we use in mailing. It cannot take it in its full form. Yes. So we need to break them in pieces. So when the nuts are crashed, they are taken to the shed. You saw the women busy. Yeah. So that's where they roast the nuts. We have the fourth step of the shea butter making uh, process. Um, this is the roaster here. The nuts are fed into the roaster and they are roasted. They start out wet at 120 degrees and when they're dry, they are at 100 degrees. And this is the process is done. As you can see, this young lady is here um, roasting these nuts. It is a physical process. fifth step of the shea butter process. We're at the meal. So the roasted nuts are now poured into this meal, comes up this hopper into this other little hopper, and it spins them down, and through that, you get the end result of here. So we're leaving the meal, we're heading to the meeting. That's the sixth process and making this wet go, ladies and gentlemen. The kneading, the kneading machine is used to knead the paste. So the kneading machine is fed with the paste. And we have some blades in that turns the paste, trying to extract the fat from the waste. Mm -hmm. So two things are added here, the warm water and cold water, just to make the paste soft so that the fat could be extracted. Now, when the fat is extracted here, the machine is stopped. Then there, there's an outlet at the back where the wastewater goes through. Then this machine is burned down. You could break it down, then scoop the fat into this pants. Ah, and so that's what we get. This is the results of the DD process after it's done. As you can see, the way it goes, it's coming together. More to come, more to see. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We're at the seven uh, uh, step and uh, shea butter process. As you can see, men can do this too. It's a big J out here making it happen. Um, but all reality, this is the boiling part of the process. Um, this is where you get it very hot. You separate the impurities and the oil. And so what's going to happen is as you boil this, the oil is going to come up and we're going to scoop it from there and it will be put in another bowl to cool. And that's the process of the boiling. So we went from the kneading process, bringing the fat here, boiling the fat down. Now, separating the impurities and contracting the oil from the top. So after the boiling process, as we spoke about um, separation of the impurities and the oil off the top. So this is the oil off the top. What happens now after that? Okay, so this one is the filtering process. So a filtering cloth is put over this pot. Then the oil is poured on the filtering cloth. Be sure that all the impurities are actually filtered then it's moved into the this room for cooling. We do first and second boiler. So now the, what the woman is doing is first boiler. But we have other women who are also doing second boiler. This is the second boiler. So after this stage, you are supposed to do filtering. So you do first and second filtering. Because before you leave it, for it to cool down. So what we have here after the eighth step, this is the final product of the filter, wet gold, ladies and gentlemen. And you see why I call it wet gold? Look how it drips, and look how it feels. But it's not only for the skin, it's for so many other things and needs that we need in our body. It's endless. I'm Zakaria Adam Lasira, the CEO of Yumza Women Association. We process shea butter and we do shea peke. Again, we do added value to the shea butter because we process soap, mosquito repellent, black soap, body pomade, body lotion. And uh, we are located in the northern region of Ghana under Sanargo district. And the uh, community name is Tampi Kuku. How long has this facility been open? Seven years. Oh. Seven years because first I was using it for uh, soap making and uh, other stuffs. Uh -huh. So it was then that I was buying it small, small from the women. And then they said, no, I should support them because they don't have buyers. Yeah. They do it and send it to market and no one is there to buy. So we, I should organize them and we'll see how we'll be doing it together. So that was how I started it on a larger scale. But, but when I first started, it was only three women. Uh -huh. Then after some few months, we increased to 35. A year we got to 70, then yearly we were increasing up to this time. Even new members are coming. coming. Yes. But this year we are not picking new members till next year. Gotcha. That's the Northern Coco. So this is our cooling room, which is not properly finished. Yes. Ready to be packaged. That one down there is really more solidified. Yes, it's also lighter. yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Some of our products. Okay. We have the raw shea butter. Uh -huh. We have a pomade where it's a lemon fragrance. Nice. Nice. How much is this one? Thirty dollars. You gonna buy it? Yes. Okay, I'll purchase. Star, uh, uh, this thing. Uh, yeah. Another way you store after it's made, this is ready to go. So this are uh, organic butter. Yes. You see that we have labeled it yep. organic. Uh -huh. So this one straight, this how it's going to be exported. Yes, just like that. It's not going to be changed into any yes. form again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, no, this is 25. 25 keys. Oh, it is. <laughs> this is that white. This is our finished product. But in other side, on, on the other side, yes. this is just the raw material. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what they start with. Yeah, that's what they start with. Yes. And then you ship it out and they do what they're going to do with it. Yes. Make cosmetics, all type of other products, mm -hmm. cook, mm -hmm. put it in food, yes. everything. Yes. We smell babies with it. We cook with it. Yes. And we use it for other things. Yes. Soap. We use yes. it for soap. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Like he said, that was the key thing he said. <laughs> this is still a raw material to them. And then they got the weight on it. You can see KS. Who picked it? So this is the group KS, Canvale, Sogolom Borbene. Uh -huh. This is KPL. That is where the nuts was picked from. Okay. Yes. Then, this is the date it was produced. Based. And this yeah. was the badge that produced it. So if there's an issue with this particular badge, you know we just need to go to the records right and know which it. people did yep. that badge yep. for isolation. I like that. Yes, so that's how it's done. This particular one is to tell the order number. So that's why we always put it there. Gotcha. To know what particular order number that is that the uh, butter is being made for and which payment number so this is for a payment, payment. yes the purchase okay mm -hmm. the purchase yeah. order number mm -hmm. or the person is organic fair for life but it's in the halal community that's in the uh, arab so, yes, community, community. Yes, jewish. or the jewish community so if we know that the, the product is supposed to go to any of this then we take the necessary yeah. listen yeah. but it's if like we think it's place. just one place yeah. we do one place yeah so ladies and gentlemen, after I showed you this wet gold in the form here as it was still cooling, but now we have a block here. This is about a 25 kg block. As you can see, it is heavy and it is ready to go. It's not easy. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this process. But as you can see at this facility, they're definitely innovative and they're making it um, better for the ladies and not as stringent. But this this 25 kg might be a little heavier. As I can see, I'm lifting it up. This thing no joke. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we came for: wet gold. Prince Sita so for his son. Many of you will remember him as the founder of the first ever privately owned TV station here in Northern Ghana. North Television. You will remember him also as the author of How to Get Rich. You will remember him also. As a banker with Echo Bank. Echo Bank is a Pan African bank, serves the whole of West Africa. Now he has run away to Accra. Now he's doing big things there. Of course, we also be having a conversation with the Mr. Mr. John Hardy Bay, Chief Executive Officer at Lifting Investment Group. And of course, the right, right? Of the Star Rights Foundation. Oh, on the mountains, that's why I'm up to the hiding places. Lucky Philip Duby, the lead South African reggae singer. The song he sang in honor of. Nelson Mandela, when he was incarcerated and put away for 28 years. So while you are romancing with your love bed, he is in. He is behind doors. While you are dreaming, he is thinking about the nature. We have Majority Radio, we in Tamale. We're here to talk about women empowerment. We're here to talk about change. Tell them why we're here, Prince. We're making, we're making a lot of rounds today, going to various media houses, meeting women and youth to develop them and to empower them to look at investment opportunities. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, uh, Prince, why are you here? Um, as usual, we okay. are here in Tamale. Um, you know, Tamil is home to me, you know, Absolutely. so I'm home yes. and I'm here with my good friends and partners. Mm. Uh, we are here to impact on the community. So I want to introduce them to Northern Ghana. Let them come and see the opportunities that exist in Northern Ghana mm. and then get them to invest in Northern Ghana. Absolutely. And this is what will create a lot of employment opportunities for the teaming unemployed youth in northern ghana um and, it, and i came together to bring this together for uh people that look like us to be able to invest our funds together and um take it to the next level because we're always stronger together if you want you can go fast alone but you'll never go big 
without people. Oh. And so, and it's all about the uplifting of people. So coming together. So um, I come to Ghana with an organization called FIRE, uh, Free Inspiration for Everyone, mm -hmm. Ghana to the Moon. Um, and so um, we come here every year to do a business technology conference oh, yeah. um, and to inspire the youth. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, invest in the youth. So as an investor, I look for opportunities that's out there. And we know this Africa, it's tons of opportunities. People just need a little push, a little jump starter to take them to the next level. Okay. And so um, coming here and uh, coming to Ghana and seeing that and as an investor and with the group that I'm with, we able to um, execute on different things and different ideas we do. We have like a pitch thing okay. and we, we have the people put their business plans together, pitch their ideas and it's like a shark tank. And then we pick the top and then they receive 1000 US dollars to, you know, uh, fund their business and go on. And also they re receive investments from individuals like me to invest in their business to scale. Because that's mostly what people are, are looking for. Scale. You know, we don't have the right equipment and things like that here in uh, Ghana. So once we get that, we can take that to the next level. Uh, uh, if you were to invest in northern Ghana, for example, what would you be looking out for? Oh, man, it, it's, it's so many things. But the one thing is, I, I love uh, natural resources. Um, I, I truly believe that natural resources can um, take the, the, the continent to a whole nother level. Um, once we get into manufacturing, you know, we can take away some of the um, stringent work by bringing in certain equipment that's not killing it. We don't want to take away the the the, the, the human uh, aspect of it. Oh, oh. We just want to take away the back breaking work um, that hurts you. And then that way we can also enter the youth in it. Because what I'm watching is it's a very, very older uh, 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 um, generation type of trade. But if we're not careful, that trade will disappear. And so we need the youth to be involved. We need to make it exciting. We need to get them to understand the benefits of the shea nut and the shea butter and where it's going to go. It is the future of Ghana. And I believe it's going to be one thing that set Ghana on a whole nother platform in the world. So okay. if you would ask me, shea nut. Oh, you will be invested in share. Yes, sir. If I get you right, you are looking at uh, establishing a process and plant here. Correct. Oh, okay. Where you take that thing from the woman that picked the share, not from the wild, and then you process them here. So we want to get into definitely um, international business um, because, like I said, the shea nut is a natural resource mm. here in Ghana. But not only do we want to take the shea nuts from the women. We want to bring the women a part of this because it's it's about organization, a collective bargain agreement. And so this is what we want to create because that's how you get a standard. The NFL has a collective bargain agreement. The NBA has a collective bargain agreement. Shea nut is the next nut to cocoa beans and it doesn't have a collective bargain agreement. You know, so this is what we also want to do to help. It's not just collecting because that has been going on. It's about enhancing and taking them with us to the next level. So that is very important. It's not about the dollar. It's about the human being and taking the human being to the next level and giving them a better life. I have uh, noted to have one uh, particular uh, thing that is our uh, share. What different are we bringing uh, so that it can uh, bring um, improvement to our women and young, uh, youth in the northern uh, uh, Ghana? What we're trying to do is add processes to that process that they already do to take away some of the stringent work, right? You know, like the kneeling uh, of the, I mean, the meeting of the thing. We can take away a lot of different stringent things like the roasting, the carrying the nuts and things like that. Even going out there from picking the nuts when we know they have to go out in the wild, you know, give them protection, give them motorized equipment to go out there and pick the nuts and they're not stranded. So it's basically just, we're, we're looking about innovation and how we can bring different things and different mechanisms to the industry without eliminating people because we want to keep the people involved. We don't want to automate it with, with, with situation. We want it to be a human process, which it has been for thousands of years. But we're going to implement certain things in there that can enhance the process and take away the stringent work that is backbreaking, you know, to the women. I took you on this journey of wet gold, something that my ancestors have used for thousands of years, but has not yet been totally introduced to the world. As we watch coconut oil take off in the world, shea nut, 
it's going to be 10 times bigger than coconut oil. The things you can use with the shea nut, the things you can do with the shea nut, it is endless. There is no waste of the shea nut, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So we use it as a source of paint. Then again, you can use that same waste as your firewood. We use it to support our uh, this thing. Okay. Uh, our, our cooking system. Yes. Then after that, you use it as a, a, a manure on your farms. If you leave it out, cattle and uh, this thing, uh, uh, pigs, All when they come in, they clear everything. <laughs> so, and uh, God has made a uh, share in us in such a way that everything of it is useful. Yes. After you have used it, to make uh, this thing boil your butter, leaving the ash yeah. of the waste, you again use it to make soup. Uh -huh. We boil the this thing, uh, add water to the ash, then we now get some form of potage into it. Then we use it to boil our local soups. Uh -huh. So no waste. No, no waste. <laughs> Every bit of it is useful. A butter process from the shea nut. There's no waste. So this is what they call a cake. Um, after all the uh, impurities came out of the, the shea uh, butter, this is what's left, the cake. And the cake can be used for fuel. So there's no waste. This is the beauty thing about it. It's an organic pro process with no waste. In order to raise a nation, you must raise the income mm -hmm. level of the people. So do you feel there's room in the shea butter business to be able to say, if the average shea butter uh, worker say makes $200 every three days, mm -hmm. is there room to give them $3? Is there room to give them $4, right? Is the, Do you feel the market is scalable enough to be able to do that? Um, yes, I'll say yes, I'll say yes. So there are other values you can put on the shea butter uh -huh. processing uh -huh. that can reap you more income. Uh -huh. So one thing is the organic. Yes. If once your product is organic, you can price it at any price uh -huh. you want. Uh -huh. Another thing is fair trade. People would want to buy and add more so you can support so the it, women. So support the women. Yeah. yeah. So that's the ways you can, I mean, increase your, the, the uh, value that you are putting on, on the shea butter. And when it happens like that, that goes directly to the people you are working with. Yes. It doesn't come to management. Yes. It doesn't come to the pocket of uh -huh. my aha. Uh -huh. It goes directly to the people you are working with. Uh -huh. So there are so many ways you can actually adjust to reap you more income so you can directly help the women. Shea butter has moved from where it used to be yes. before a lot of people didn't know about no, it. But now oh. it is up there. Oh, yeah, it is still, it they is don't really know. <laughs> and they still, so imagine when still they really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like cocoa beans then. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a serious business. Yes. And I keep saying that do the right thing, give out the right quality, and people will just keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah. Keep coming. Keep coming. So that opportunity is there. It can be, you can scale up. Um, there are times you get orders and you look at your capacity and you're able to fulfill it oh. in the shortest possible time because yes. then the customer is giving you a time frame. Yes, I'm looking for this quantity in about yeah. two weeks and you are not able to do it because you don't have the capacity. But at this point, we give them the opportunity every year to bargain how much they think they should receive. Stay tuned as we continue to bark on a journey of building the legacy of wet gold. Until we meet again, it's your brother, Hardy Bay, your street brother mentor. <laughs>